What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another HHN video. I'm your host, Anthony. With me, as always, the very funny, the very talented Howling Hour, aka Rob. How you doing, Rob? Pretty good. I'm, uh, you know, just hanging in there, ready for, uh, ready for HHN to come for us next week. Pretty a little sooner for you. Uh, have you begun to pack? You know, get your stuff ready. How, how's it going with that? Yeah, no, I haven't done any of that yet. But you know, I'm a last okay. minute guy. I can get it done in 20 minutes. Well, I, I like that. It, it, you know, lets me know that you you're a fly by the seat of your pants kind of guy, and just uh, you carefree. I like it. Carefree, man. I love it. Um, Rob, I, I I thought it right that you know before the event, it's a tradition here on the Nights of Horror. Okay, we do a little. Most anticipated list for both scare okay. zones and mazes. What do you think, man? Uh, it sounds good. Sounds good to me. Sounds good. All right. So we got eight mazes, three scare zones. No one cares about the show. Um. So Rob, you're we'll go for we'll go from least to most. So least to most. Your least anticipated maze for the most um, anticipation. My least anticipated maze is probably going to have to be um, The Walking Dead. Okay, we got that one the same. Okay. <laughs> I, I mean, there's no re I don't think we have to explain it. I mean. Yeah, yeah, it, it is. It's The Walking Dead. I mean, uh, you know, this is the only thing that's kind of, I guess, maybe having a little saving grace uh, for me with The Walking Dead is I'm hoping they – they, I don't know how they're going to change the, the layout of the maze. They might not change it at all, but I'm hoping at least they bring in some new characters. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers to see a Negan. If, yes. if, if I see a Negan, then, you know, this maze might jump up a little for me, but as of right now, as you know, the way it stands, I'm, you know, it's, it's, it's at the bottom of the list for me. Yeah, man. With walking dead. It was more, you know, it's, it's just something I haven't seen in a while, so that's probably the reason why I'm going to go in it. But I know if it, unless it's going to be the same, like Rob said, I need to see like a Negan or like maybe a Glenn scene. You know, that'd be a lot of cool yeah, to see. Yeah. Um, more updated moments of The Walking Dead, but if it's going to be the same, I'm sorry, it's at the bottom of the list. All right, so my number seven is going to go to Halloween for the Return of Michael Myers. Oh, okay. Um, seeing this maze, it was a good maze when it came in 2018. Um, the only thing I'm looking forward to a little bit now is because Murdy said he's got a new original ending for it, um, like a, a surprise ending. So maybe we'll get some, hopefully, Season of the Witch teases. Maybe we'll get something different than what we got last time. Who knows? This is a very small area to put a maze in general, in my opinion. Um, so we'll see what happens, man. But, yeah, Halloween 4, my number 7, man. Okay, uh, my number seven is going to be the Terror Tram. Um, I'm glad. I'm glad it's back. I, you know, I'm not saying I'm not excited for it, but um, I've seen the Purge before. I, you know, I feel like they might uh, they might add a little bit of the Forever Purge in there with it yeah. being the ultimate Purge. Um, but you know, I, I've seen it before. Um, I, I want to. It, that's just kind of where, you know, when I was thinking about my list, it just wasn't the excite the excitement factor for me. It wasn't too high. Um, more so, I think I put it where where I put it because I'm glad the Terror Trans back. Otherwise, I think I might have actually put it a little lower. Um, you know, I might have put a Walking Dead uh, above it. Um, just because like I was saying before, you know, maybe they have like a Negan or a Glenn scene or something like like how you were saying. But and right now, the Terror Tram is going to be uh, num number seven for me. Wow. I guess I ranked it a little bit higher than you, but we'll get there soon. Hey, yeah, they, yeah that, that's all right. To each their own. Um, what's your number six, man? My number six is Halloween 4. Um, you know, I love Michael Myers. Uh, I understand, you know, why, why we're getting this maze. Um I think it's gonna I think it's still gonna be good, just like you were saying, you know, uh uh Murdy had mentioned about maybe you know some some little changes, some little tweaks. So uh you know, I'm I'm excited for it, but again, you know, I, I've seen uh this maze, I've seen Michael Myers quite a few times. Right. Um I'm excited to have him back, 
but at the same time, just excitement factors, you know, right around, right around number six for me. Number six for me is going to go to the exorcist. Oh, okay. Um, another maze I've seen in 2016 and uh, other, uh, the only reason why it's so high on the list right here is because this year it's in a soundstage and that's the only thing that's kind of keeping me like, okay, that's better environmental control where in, in 2016 it was at the mummy queue. So yeah, I, the only, I mean, I don't know what much they can add to it. I mean, like Murdy said, the whole film takes place in one bedroom. Right. Uh, you know, locations here and there, but I really don't see anything else they can really add to it. I think the only thing that's going to make it a little bit more scarier is the fact that it will be a little bit more cooler in there because, you know, when you see possession on film and, and probably real life, uh, the room gets really cold, drop in temperature, you can see your breath. So um, I don't know, go to the extent of seeing my breath, but just to feel that it's cold in there it will make me feel more into the movie. Um, number five, I'm going to go, uh, the curse of Pandora's box. Okay. Wow. All right. Uh, it's a great original maze. Don't get me wrong. Um, I loved it in 2019. Uh, and I'm kind of excited. I get to see it again. Um, but again, I mean, I don't know if it's going to be the same or because it's an original maze, they can update some rooms and change some rooms out and you can see more. So that is the only thing that's really holding my breath on that. Uh, maybe it will be a whole new maze in general because it's an original maze. They could just pull props and just kind of incorporate them differently and do different paint jobs. But um, for the most part, I'm thinking it's going to be the same thing, just maybe a okay. couple new tweaks. But we'll see what happens, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to going through it again. It gave me some mean Black Sabbath 13 3D vibes. So and Yeah, Cooper. I did. Yeah, you know, so uh, I'm excited to see what they have to bring. What's your number five? My number five is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, I once again I've seen uh well, I've seen saw whatever word you, I I've seen Texas Chainsaw a few times. I feel like uh you know just some some the pictures I've seen you know the facade looks really cool. Uh, I'm excited because you know Leatherface you know again he's one of the heavy hitters. You know, one of those icons uh, as far as when it comes to the slashers. Uh, so I'm always excited to see to see uh, Leatherface. And he's not in that maze is not in the water rule queue. They're giving him a bigger, bigger, um, you know, kind of area to work with. So, wow. you know, you know, I, I'm I'm holding out hope as far as, you know, maybe we get some, you know, some stuff, some stuff we haven't seen before. So, you know, that's why I, I got it right right at number five. Awesome. What is your uh, number four, man? My number four is The Exorcist. And wow. uh, uh, for some of the reasons you were saying, it is in the sound stage. So I think they're going to be able to play uh, not only with the environment as far as, you know, the, the you know, cold air and stuff like that, like you were talking about. Right. But I feel like they can they're going to be able to play with sound a lot more and you know the more i thought about it the more i was thinking like you know sound plays a big factor in these mazes as far as you know like you know the, the triggers and stuff like that so i think um being able to control it a little more being able to kind of filter out certain sounds and kind of contain sounds into rooms and just a different way uh they can use uh sound also light lighting again controlled environment i think they're going to be able to um, pull off some some stuff we didn't see when we got it the first time. So yes, you know, like you were saying, Murdy said, you know, it takes place pretty much in one room. So you know, we kind of got, you know, what you're dealing with as far as like that. But but I think they're gonna possibly maybe maybe add some stuff that kind of just spice it up a little. I do not think I could be wrong, but I do not think we're going to get a a scene for scene you know, turn for turn remake uh, or, you know, redo of, right. of 2016s. I think we're going to, they're going to add a little something. And again, in the sound stage, uh, throws a whole other, uh, you know, gives you, a, I think a bigger, um, you can do more with that. Yeah. Not to mention, dude, they recently just released a photo. Yes. They I have just the, they, saw. They brought the iconic facade back, which I'm very stoked for. It, it looks Awesome. I like it. I, like I did it a like lot. that about the maze in 2016 was the, the it, it literally puts you right in the movie poster. Oh, yeah. And, and Horn Nights is famous for doing stuff like that. So 
Um, yeah, man. Uh, if you really think about it, too, kind of fun fact, uh, an American world from London essentially did put you in their poster because it's the two guys running and in the back is the slaughtered lamb. Yeah, it's true. So It's very true. Just a little fun fact. Um, my number, what do we have, four, uh, is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, okay. I, I had never gotten to see Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, the first movie in a maze form. Okay. Uh, even though multiple years that I've gone, uh, I think they did it like, I think once or twice over the time I've gone based around the first film. Okay. So, um, t- to kind of see a maze based around the first film, um, I am looking forward to seeing what they have in store for this maze. Uh, it looks like we're seeing a lot of scenic stuff. The facade looks amazing, like the just like the film. Yeah. Um, and and Murdy does a, a great job of writing the mazes, and then Chris does an amazing job designing them. Where uh, it, the movie is literally from start to finish of the film. You're walking through an hour movie for five minutes. And they really nail everything. So I'm, I'm hoping to see some of the iconic scares, like when Leatherface slams the door um, and, and kills that guy with the hammer. Um, I'm also hoping to see, you know, the girl fall in the bone room. Um, you know, the din- the dinner scene, obviously, is an iconic yes. scene. And, and hopefully a, a version of the chase out where you're instead of, you know, Leatherface chasing the girl, you're the victim and you're running away from Leatherface, which I think that's why that ending, if you've seen it uh, in the construction updates, uh that's why that ending, you know, uh, of the maze at least, uh, is kind of like a foresty kind of right. outdoor scene because I think you're going to be running away from Leatherface. Also, to see him in the tuxedo costume, like, that's one of my favorite costumes on Leatherface. Like, it's iconic. Um, number three, The Ultimate Purge Terror Trap. Ooh, okay. Wow. You have, I have mine lower and you have yours way, way higher. All yeah, right. Um, it's mainly because, like, okay, the purge, yeah, we get it. It's just people in masks with weapons. Uh, some of those actual costumes, I do, I do like the, the thing about the, the good thing about the purge, whether the movies suck or not, the costumes are always bitching. Yes, um, they do a good job theming everyone per movie of what the theming over the overall movie is, and, and really fit that theme. Forever Purge kind of had that cowboy aesthetic where they didn't, they were kind of like outlaws. They didn't want the purge to end, so they kept purging afterwards. That's why they're kind of more dressed as cowboys, like how a cowboy would do is disobey the law and stuff. Right. Um, Purge election year had a lot of political, uh, like, masks and stuff because election. Uh, Anarchy had, like, again, more, like, anarchist-type style and everything. And then, of course, the the, the Purge was more, like, the rich, you know. So every movie kind of has their own taste of costumes, which I heard we're going to see, like, at least from every film, even the Forever Purge. Of some costumes that are going to be appearing. Plus, dude, it, it, it's an historical route. You got Bates Motel there, the Bates House, and then right behind you get to walk in the war. The world sets it. Um, I think that specific scene right there with the the plane crash is mm-hmm. going to fit the purge so well. I mean, just thinking about, like, someone hijacked a plane and then it just crashed there, and then you have the people running around the plane. Like, I think it's going to fit amazing. Well, you're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> I almost said it like four times to you alone. <laughs> You're a liar. Uh, that was a that was a joke off camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so you got your the Forever Purge at three. Um, I'm going with my uh, my favorite maze at number three from 2019, uh, Pandora's Box, and. Um, like you were saying, you know, uh, I don't, you know, uh, this was a good maze, a good original maze. Um, I think they can switch out certain things. I don't know if we're, we're going to get a whole like whole other maze or anything like that. I think maybe we might get rooms switched around or maybe even just one extra room that might be a little different, you know, a different uh, a Titan or different God, um, you know, it, you know, in a small kind of area or even just uh, a prop that might be a little different than than the last time we got it. But, you know, this was my favorite maze in 2019. I really liked it. I liked the way they used um, lighting. I like the sounds. I like the artifacts. I like all that stuff. So um, that's why I got it at number three. So I'm, I'm excited. You know, this is definitely a maze that I'm looking forward to going through again. Number two for you. Number two for me is 
Universal Monsters, uh, The Bride of Frankenstein Lives. That is uh, no way after that yes. amazing presentation at Awaken the Spirits. Yeah, I, and I know. I didn't sell you for the top. No, 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 no. I mean, here's the th- it's number two. Come on, you got it. It's number two. I'm a liar. You're a um, liar. <laughs> <laughs> so, I th- this is the thing, and I'm not going to talk about my number one yet, but yes, like uh, the universal monster mazes that, that they have put on throughout the years, the few years that they've done them at, at Hollywood Horror Nights have been phenomenal. Um, amazing and, and probably even though I don't think they were my favorite mazes of the year they're definitely in the top three I would say they were probably the most beautiful mazes most like detailed mazes that I've walked through um, and so that's why <laughs> that's why I have it at number two because I do think uh, I think it, with and then you know watching at, at midsummer screams awaken the spirits you know watching the the presentation that murdy put on you know i am super hyped for this there's no doubt in my mind that this maze is going to be beautiful and maybe after i go through it this might be my top maze of the whole event who knows but as of right now my hype level for it i got it at number two number two for me is going to go to the haunting of hill house all right all right yeah, I mean, I, what can I say about the Haunted Hill House, man? I, I remember Sammy came over one day and introduced it to me, and and he binged the whole. I binged the whole Hill House in one day, could not stop watching it. Uh, so, you know, I know everyone's mad about the facade, but I mean, that doesn't mean there could be a facade within a facade. So, and they've done that many times at Horror Nights with much yes. smaller pa- uh, uh, spaces. They make it work, but. Um, I am excited to see what they do with this, especially because there's going to be hidden ghosts in the damn maze, just like the show. So, like, you know, it's going to make you want to go multiple nights just to see what you can find, and hopefully everyone can find everybody and kind of point them out and stuff. It'd be really cool, especially, like, when we put up the walkthroughs and stuff. I can't wait to see if people, like, rewatch it a bunch of times just so at this point you can see this ghost. At this time step, you can see this. Like, just to see stuff like that's really yeah. cool. But, um... I mean, just the, the the character, the bent neck lady, the bowler hat, uh, the bowler hat guy, man. I mean, these were terrifying characters. There was a lot of terrifying moments, especially that one scene when they're in the morgue. Mor- uh, yeah, that's, that's that's a scene that pops up in my head. And the other scene, of course, when when the two sisters are driving and then the dead one just pops up in the middle for a jump scare. I mean, that was terrifying. And then just kind of seeing the mom kind of flip was was terrifying. So I'm excited for this maze, dude. I, I think it's going to be a good one. Um, but nothing could beat my number one because I know it will be the most fan rated maze for 2021. And that is the bride of Frankenstein lives. I mean, dude, you know, the fact that they're doing a, a spiritual sequel to the bride of Frankenstein is like basically universal saying we're making a sequel to the bride of Frankenstein and you get to walk through it. Yeah. It's like, dude, I, you kind of feel honored at that point because it's literally bringing cinema to life, but it is kind of like a what if scenario, um, yes. which I love about it. Uh, and it's telling this amazing story with the bride. Uh, we get to see her bring back her, uh, her Frankenstein's monster and literally make him immortal with vampires blood and she's going to be fighting vampires and we're going to go look at the, just <laughs> wa- I, I'm so excited for it. Like just watching it. And seeing the panel to awaken the spirits and Murdy breaking it down, like, okay, so you're gonna see her get the monster and save them, and then they're gonna go to a cabin, then she's gonna start vampire hunting, and then she's gonna bring them back, and you know, just to kind of hear all of that and like all the see all the different characters and who's coming back, it is just so fucking. I I think honestly that is going to be. I I and I'm saying this with a bold statement, and I haven't even gotten through it yet. I think this is gonna be 2018's Universal Monsters. Wow, that's a big. That's a that's a that is a. Bold I really, statement. I have a lot of faith in this maze, like uh, a ton of faith in this maze because the story is a movie that I've wanted for years, and Murdy was like, "Fuck a movie, I'll bring it to life for you," and I get to see that in person. Like that is like I I'll tell you this right now. Like we will upload maze walkthroughs. Like other people will upload maze walkthroughs that have better quality than us, but. No, I no walkthrough on YouTube can do justice to what you see in person with that maze. Yeah, and I'm already yeah. saying, and I haven't even seen the maze. That's how much 
faith I have in this maze. I think it's well, gonna be we, the best rated. We know uh I mean we know what Murdy does and and we he has he already has a reputation with his previous universal mazes. And I mean one thing oh you can I forgot to ahead. add fucking slash, bro. I mean yeah. that that score at Awaken the Spirits, I was like, okay, I can vibe with this. Not to mention I don't know if you saw this on Twitter recently, but I met I, I sent a tweet out to Murdy slash. I did see that. I did see that figure. I asked a simple question: When are you going to release the the figure Holidays in Hell album and slashes Frankenstein meets the Wolfman soundtrack? Figure himself replied, "When better question is when are we going to get Slash and myself to score a maze?" Yes. So I'm going to put it on record right now. Do it right now. Timestamp that thing. Timestamp a year, and I'll, I'll put the photo on the screen. I'm not bullshitting this, and it's still on my Twitter. You can find it. I'm gonna go on record right now. If I'm partially responsible for Slash and Figure getting together for a maze this year, I've officially made it in my haunt career. I, <laughs> I was I was the starting talks of inspiration to get those two to collab for an ultimate. Halloween Horror Nights original maze, maybe even Universal Monsters, but that will make my heart so happy. Like, <laughs> and the only thing I would ask from them too is be like, "Hey, just let me get you on the podcast." Yes. I'm sorry, I just I fanboyed when I saw that tweet uh, Friday night when Figure replied. I like legit lost it for his response. I was like, "If I become <laughs> responsible because of this, like, I will freaking I I've succeeded in life." But go ahead and say what you were saying. I'm sorry. Oh no no. Uh, what was it? What was I saying? You were talking I about uh, Mur- Murdy doing his thing. And oh yeah yeah. I mean, <laughs> um, we have when we have you know the past Universal Monster mazes, uh, to kind of show proof of what Murdy does with these specific types of mazes, and he knocks it out of the park. They're beautiful mazes. They're everything about them is amazing. So I have no doubt in my mind that that bride. Uh, Bride of Frankenstein Live is going to be right up there with the rest. Possibly, I'll even say possibly, um, might be the best of the Universal Monster Mazes. You agree with me on that statement then, huh? Yeah, yeah, I do agree with you. I agree that that it could, you know, I think when Universe, Universal Monsters was 2018, I think I did rate that as far as overall my top favorite maze. So I will say that. Um, I think... Based on just like how we got to see what Murdy was talking about, the story, the different outfits, just the detail in all the storyline of what's going on in this maze. It, it, and I, I gotta say, that was like for that presentation, yeah, he practically gave us the whole story except oh, for yeah. the ending. But it was, it is super planned out, super detailed. Like you could tell, like when he starts writing, he's in it. He's like, okay, this scene's gonna happen here, and then we're gonna do that scene. Like, and he's detailed, like. The amount of detail and work that goes yeah. in that from from both the artists, everyone that comes together yeah, to make yeah. this maze, it's it's insane. Yeah. So you, I mean, that right there just shows you the confidence that they have in this maze. So yeah, you're probably right. This might be overall the best Universal Monsters maze to date. So I will agree with you there. Um, but you're number the, one. My number one. Number uh, one. If you have not guessed it, it is. Uh, the haunting of Hill House, and and let let me uh let me just briefly explain why. Uh, for me, I <laughs> in my head I can hear all I hear is you're a liar. You're a liar. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> oh, I got a lot of editing to do on this one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I. I am also a huge fan of the haunting of Hill house. Uh, I thought this maze, I mean, I thought this, I thought this uh, series on, on Netflix was, I mean, one of the best horror series I've ever watched. Um, You speak of, of the, all the iconic characters that we see throughout the series and yeah, you know, they're amazing. You just mentioned them, you know, everyone knows these characters. If you've watched the, uh, the series, but one thing that when I watched the series, I just knew off the bat, I was like, this is this would make an amazing uh, maze for Horror Nights is <clears throat> just the the 
the house itself, the the scenes that they were in, like you were saying, you know, the, the mortuary, um, the the house period, you know, that just mortuary all, one shot too. Yeah, like uh, just at, everything about this series lends itself perfectly for a maze at at Halloween Horror Nights, and so for me, I love I love the show, and and when it was announced that it was going to be at Horror Nights. I was just like, I couldn't ask for anything more because as soon as I watched the show, I was like, this needs to be a maze. Everything about this series belongs at Halloween Horror Nights and I'm getting it. So that's why I have it so high. Um, well, not to this- mention too, I'm glad Netflix didn't pull the plug after yes. this, you yes. know, 20, because it was, it was supposed to be in 2020 when this maze came right. so they could promote Bly Manor. But, you know, with the pandemic, we didn't really, um, you know, we didn't get the Horror Nights, so... I'm glad Netflix kept the plug in and and was going full force and bringing it to right. 2021. Right. And, and like you were saying, you make a really, really good point that I've thought about as well is, you know, the facade. Everyone had what, you know, had their negativity about the facade. Even I said something about it, but that was just based off of what I seen in Orlando. And I was like, man, Orlando got this ridiculous facade. And, and we, we got, you know what? And the more I look at it, I was like, it's yes it's whatever a a flat board with with a picture on it but it looks cool you know i like the coloring i like it but like you said before we could walk right into that maze and be smacked with a facade of the house of our own so we don't we don't know i won't be and i won't be disappointed if we don't get that but we don't know what's in that in that maze we could get a facade like you were saying universal is known for doing stuff like this so I don't I don't doubt that it could happen. You know, I think the maze overall is going to be amazing um, with or without a facade. I think the maze is going to, in my opinion, be top, probably top two, top three mazes uh, that they put on this year. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm super excited for for the haunting of Hill House. Everything that I've wanted when I seen the when I seen the show has is coming to HHN, and I cannot complain. I'm super happy about that. Yeah. Uh, and then we have our three scare zones, uh, which will be our ending of our video right here. Um, Wait, hold on. Hold on. We have four scare zones, don't we? Because, I mean, if you you get pretty terrified if you walk through the Jabberwockies and and they're dancing around. You get, you get pretty terrified, don't you? <laughs> I mean, we're going to count that as a scare zone, right? <laughs> terrified that they're still here i don't know why they're still here um (laughs) number three for me is gonna go to actually chainsaw rangers everyone that i've talked to is like super stoked from this scare zone and don't get me wrong i I bet it's gonna be a great scare zone i bet the talent will be amazing um but i don't know it's just chainsaws you know and 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 i mean it's it's a staple at horror night so i i expect it i expect it nonetheless but I don't know, man. I, I, I have to see it, but I, I like I said, I don't doubt that all uh, scare actors will, will they'll give a hundred and ten percent because you know it's just good to be back. So it'll be a lot of fun to see them what they do, especially with the the chainsaw chase out and everything. Here, here, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Um, here's the thing. So for my number three, uh, I'm gonna agree with you. Is the Chainsaw Rangers. Um, like you were saying, chainsaws is a staple of not only horror nights but other haunts as well. Chainsaws are used uh, quite often. I think um, the outfits are probably going to be pretty cool. Uh, you know, those might stand out a little different than normal. The, the characters, obviously, like you're saying, they're going to bring it. They're going to they're going to kill. They're going to crush. And I'm going to, I have no, com- you know, I'm, I'm never going to complain about scare actors because. Never once have I been to an event and and they not uh, brought it, uh, even even if they were probably not feeling it that night. To me, I was like, everyone I've ever come across has brought it 100 percent. So I'll never complain about them. You're a liar. Um, <laughs> you're you're a liar. <laughs> so, oh, I keep so doing for, this myself. <laughs> so for me, number three is uh, Chainsaw Rangers. Number two, I'm gonna go Silver Screen Queens, man. I mean, okay, okay. This is gonna be right out the exit of Bride of Frankenstein Lives. They're giving, it's the year of the ladies, man, and I and I appreciate that. Um, 
all well-known icon monsters are getting their women counterparts in via uh, brides, daughters, you know, whatever it's family related, they're coming to take over. And I cannot be more excited for it, honestly. Fake movie posters, fake movie trailers, you know. I like it. A lot of fun original concept ideas, so it looks a lot of fun. About you, I no, no, I, I agree with you. I think, uh, I think it going down this route, it's kind of opening up a door for, for, uh, I guess just more creativity. And I can't, can't ever complain about that. But unfortunately, Anthony, uh, my number two is going to be, uh, Demon City. You're a liar. Uh, I, <laughs> I felt like it was coming and I wasn't prepared for it. Um, <laughs> You know, I, I've here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's, here's the thing. <laughs> You're a liar. Um, <laughs> I think we not so much we've seen this type of scare zone before. Um, you know, reading you know the the synopsis of it, it feels a little different, but also a little familiar. So that's kind of just why I have it at number two. Uh, I think it's going to be good. It just pictures I've seen. From people there who are you know showing updates and stuff like that that specific area and stuff they've shown looks very very intense and very very graphic and so i, I like that i like that <laughs> the way you're like that is that specific area <laughs> <laughs> forgive me forgive but, me um Number one for me. Number like, one. Number Demon one. City. All right. I, I, I All like right. the idea. It, you know, it's it's a bar. Uh it's like a nightclub and demons have taken over and it's going to be the kind of like a party zone in a way. Um, okay. So it sounds like a lot of fun. I mean, maybe they'll do a mixture of like dance music with like heavy metal and then right in the, in the middle it'll be like that goth type music too. So. I, I feel like it kind of reminds me of like a, 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 I mean, I say cartoon, but it's more like a graphic novel cartoon of like Constantine. Yeah. Like some of like Constantine. Or when you think of like Blade, you know, that scene where yeah, the vampires yeah. are all in the club. Yeah, stuff. It, it kind of reminds me of that. It sounds cool. I'm into it. You know, if I can, if they allow me to dance and cut a rug, if you will, I think I'd be okay with it. Yeah, do a little dance. Make a little love. Get down, Get down tonight. tonight. That's awesome. <laughs> and obviously with the process of elimination, Rob, you're number one. The Jabberwockies. Uh you're a liar. You're a liar. <laughs> <laughs> um, the Universal Universal Silver uh, Scream Queens, uh, yes. just just because, and this this I will say has to do uh, a lot with what was shown at Awaken the Spirits. Um, just their their own little trailers, how the you know the counterparts, the the Universal Monsters kind of thing, and I, I think it's just a little more creativity in Horror Nights, and we're getting it um, right after we get out of Bride. So I think it's, it, you know, it, it kind of, it, it blends itself. I like when they do that kind of stuff, when they hit, you think you're done with the maze and they hit you with like a gauntlet or a little like scare kind of area after. So, and this, uh, I think is going to be pretty awesome based on what, uh, Murdy's doing with, with, uh, the bride, uh, bride of Frankenstein lives and the, the costume designs and all that stuff. I think they're the the ladies outside of the maze are going to get the same treatment and the same respect and i cannot wait to see what what you know what they do with with them and the, the designs and their costumes and just kind of how they they mesh them into the end of that maze so i'm excited for that scare zone i might walk through it and maybe come back and walk again because and then maybe again. go back and, and then go again and then come back and walk again you're a liar you're a liar. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for our anticipation list. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Scare zones and mazes. Tune in tomorrow. Got a very special video exclusively on the Boo Bros. Yes, it's not going to be on Nights of Horror. The final HHN Week video will be exclusively on the Boo Bros. Boo Bros. And I'll, just, I'll just spoil it right now. Anticipation list. What? Halloween Horror Nights. Orlando. What? We're going to be breaking down the mazes, scare zones, see what I, I'm anticipated for shows, because uh, no Jabberwockies over there. Well, let me, um, 
I mean, let me ask you this, Anthony. I know you don't want to give too much away. Is there, you know, a little teaser to entice me to check that out? You got a little teaser, teaser. little just a little teaser, little teaser. I don't little know some teaser. anything, anything. A little tomorrow's teaser video. Yeah, like anything. What what you got going on? Little teaser, nothing. Oh snap! <sighs> that was the teaser right there. Okay, Ooh. all right, all right. I'll take it. I'll take it. Yep. They probably hate it because that's probably going to be me saying my number ten is. <laughs> And uh, yeah, and so it's gonna be a lot of fun. I decided, you know, this today that I was just gonna put it on Boo Bros. It make a lot of sense. Uh, West Coaster going to an East Coast event, making his anticipation list. Um, got a lot of work to do on that one, man, because there's a lot of good, uh, good, good stuff this year. Really good stuff. So until then, I'm Anthony. That's Rob. And we are the Knights of Horror, aka and the Howling Hour. Oh. Ow. If you guys enjoyed today's video, hit that like button, that subscribe button with that bell notification. Be time, be aware every time we put up a new video. Follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and at Twitter at night at Knights of Horror. Can't remember my own Twitter. I think isn't it the Knights of Horror? No, or is it just Knights Instagram's of the Knights of Horror. Oh, okay, Twitter's Thank Knights you. of Horror. Got it. Until then, Got we'll it. see you guys. Next time we see you guys, actually, we'll be on um, Orlando, well, in Hollywood. Right. See you guys soon. <laughs>